In 2016, id Software redefined modern first-person shooters. The release of the fourth installment of Doom helped them regain the FPS crown from games that drifted away from the chaotic action of their ancestors. For years, more realistic gunplay and grounded circumstances dominated the genre with only a handful of notable titles straying from that trend. However, this was only the beginning of a new chapter. The follow-up was coming four years later and it had to live up to the new exceptional standard for the series. This sequel had to be something special, which is why we're going to explore what makes Doom Eternal so great. id Software established new mechanics in Doom that would be the defining factor for what made people love the game. The foundation was that the focus would be on the single-player campaign. Multiplayer did exist, but only as a small addition to the already rich single-player gameplay. The cornerstone of this design was that the player would always be driving forward like the juggernaut the Doom Slayer was meant to be. From the initial awakening moments to the dismissing of any exposition, your role was clearly defined as unstoppable force, and you lived it. From this, the concept of gaining health and ammo primarily from combat strengthened the game, making it feel like you were the heavy metal-infused demon-slaying god that was promised. Glory kills, while not universally appreciated, gave a bit of cinematic presence to regaining health and clearing the screen of enemies. id Software had everything they needed to make a sequel just by dumping the Slayer on new maps and raking in the money. However, they didn't milk their success for an influx of cash and above-average review scores. Doom Eternal took the strong gameplay foundation and added layers that enhanced the tactical aspects of combat in a way that made the game distinct and even more enjoyable. Early on, you gain numerous abilities, each of which aids you in using combat to maintain your resources within the game. The foundational aspect of Unstoppable Force is still going strong, but now instead of just glory killing for health or hitting up the chainsaw when you're low on ammo, you'll be blasting out a flamethrower for armor and lobbing two types of grenades. Your flame belch skill causes a small amount of damage over time, but as you attack or ultimately kill the affected target, armor rains off of them like a golden shower for you to gleefully dance within. Then there are the two flavors of grenades, freeze and frag. The former does what you'd expect and freezes targets, offering a temporary reprieve from the chaos as well as the ability to do damage freely. The latter also functions as a typical frag grenade but has some additional tactical benefits as well. Doom Eternal's expansion of tactical mechanics provides another layer of gameplay not prominent in Doom 2016. One of the most notable tactical additions is the enhancement to movement. Now you start from the beginning with a double jump, but partway through the game you also receive two recharging dashes that can and must be used to dodge the lightning-fast attacks of enemies. In addition to this, there are bars positioned around parts of most combat areas that you can use to swing higher and use verticality as an advantage. Couple this with the unlockable ability to slow down time when you use the secondary fire of your weapons while in the air and you've got yourself a great way to turn those demons into jelly. The Slayer's abilities are only part of that tactical growth though. Many of the enemies, especially some of the newer additions, are best dealt with using specific weapons and targeting weak spots. For instance, that classic frag grenade can be lobbed into a Cacodemon's mouth to instantly have them ready to glory kill. Arachnotrons can be weakened with the precision grenade shot from your shotgun onto their scorpion-like gun. Even the classic Revenant can have his iconic shoulder launchers destroyed, severely damaging and weakening him. These calculated maneuvers, along with several others, make it so that swapping guns and precision aiming can mean the difference between success and failure, especially on higher difficulties. Difficulty is also one place Doom Eternal took a few steps forward. It's already a much greater challenge to manage the additional abilities the Doom Slayer has, but with the new enemies and more robust upgrade system, obstacles had to get tougher. With my familiarity with Doom and other first-person shooters, I started out on Ultra Violence, Doom's hard mode. It seemed like a solid choice at first, but after a few hours of spending most of my time ass up surrounded by laughing demons, I took it back to hurt me plenty. Even on normal, Doom Eternal doesn't pull any punches. The time between full health with things going fine and being obliterated is very slim. Every demon can do a load of damage and things can and will get out of hand quickly. Taking on one of the new demons, the Marauder, can be frustrating unless you employ just the right tactics against him. And no, those tactics don't necessarily require you screaming at your monitor or television screen. There are moments in Doom Eternal that can be even more frustrating though. The gameplay now centers around managing your health, armor, and ammo through the use of various tools at the most opportune times. 
This process works wonderfully to keep your objective dynamic, but if you get into a scenario where you're out of ammo, it can shut everything down. The chainsaw is the primary way for you to gain ammo, and if you're like me and play fast and loose with explosions, you may clear an area of any demons that can be ripped and torn without first being weakened. There were far too many times where I was running around with only a chainsaw hoping I'd come across a zombie or soldier to become my ammo pinata only to die without a bullet to my name. Doom Eternal's verticality also extends itself into platforming that can at times be demoralizing. You'll often need to combine precision time jumps, double jumps, bar swings, and both dashes just to barely make it onto a ledge or platform. Some of the most challenging platforming tests are for finding secret areas, which of course are optional, but who wants to miss them? My ass actually became sore from clenching my butt cheeks in effort to squeeze just a little more jump power from the Doom Slayer's legs by the end of the game. The secret areas, the way you access them, and the contents they hold are compelling elements in their own right. A good portion of my time spent playing Doom Eternal was looking at the map trying to determine exactly how to get to a secret location. Sometimes it would involve finding an extremely well-hidden button or figuring out the route I needed to take to break through a wall. Inside, unlockable items like records containing classic id software music or one of the whole new collection of cool little toys would usually be the reward. Other times, however, it would be finding your way to special encounters or slayer gate keys. Both administer extra tough challenges that contribute to unlocking more skins for characters and weapons and fully completing level goals and achievements. The system in place for skins is fairly robust, including each of the slayer's weapons, the slayer himself, and the demons within multiplayer. Surprisingly, all of these must be obtained within the game or Slayer's Club as there's no microtransaction store to be found at the time of this video. Finding and completing these secrets and challenges were often the most difficult parts of the game, but they also proved to be some of the most rewarding. Despite those minor issues, Doom Eternal delivered an experience that exceeded my expectations by expanding areas that I assumed weren't required for a good Doom game. What caught me off guard the most was how prominent the story was within the game. From the very start, the Doom Slayer is more personified than ever before. Many events take place with third-person camera views that show his actions clearly and even his face to some degree. At first, these additional characters and cutscenes were confusing since so little of the previous game's story stood out. However, as time went on, enough was explained and expressed to get me much deeper in the narrative than I could have imagined. I was reading bits of the codex I had previously ignored just to find out more of what was going on. It even manages to tie in the Doom guy from the original games, which I had previously assumed had nothing to do with the reboot of the franchise. The part of the game that ties together the lore and secret items is the Fortress of Doom. Here, the player can explore a larger-than-expected orbiting gothic space station that feels like it was pulled right out of Warhammer 40,000. Within this Fortress of Doomitude, you're free to use your resources to upgrade your Slayer, check out obtained music and toys, and unlock further items and skins with Sentinel batteries you gain through gameplay. You can even go to a demon prison in the basement with the amazing name of Ripatorium to get some free practice on enemies you've faced up until that point. The other surprising aspect of Doom Eternal was just how engaging the online battle mode is. Doom 2016 had a bit of multiplayer that had you playing demons, but Battle Modes 2 vs. 1 Demons vs. Slayer competition plays wonderfully. The demons must embrace tactical roles that involve teamwork in establishing the chaos that can eliminate the Slayer. The Slayer takes on the role of managing the chaos to try and burn down the two-player demons while fending off swarms of AI demons just like the campaign. This tug-of-war using chaos as the rope can have incredible back-and-forth moments even within a single round. Asymmetrical multiplayer can be one of the most entertaining designs out there, but it can also fall apart without adequate balance or any one of the players not being skilled enough. Hopefully everyone is finding it as satisfying as I do and the developers continue to expand it, perhaps with more players in each match or even larger maps. Doom Eternal's blend of enthralling gameplay, impressive visuals, and an absolutely perfect soundtrack make it the standard bearer for the FPS genre. It took what was already innovative gameplay in Doom and built upon it in a way that made it feel almost like an entirely new experience. Rather than make a glorified expansion, which I'm sure many fans would have been happy with, id Software raised the bar and built a game people will remember. They didn't just settle for good. And that's what makes Doom Eternal so great.